Dishonored hey. Part 2. Dishonored Part 2. Welcome back. Everybody! We're gonna do Dishonored Part 2. Especially me. <laughs> Thanks everyone for, for skipping Part 1 and jumping in yeah. when it gets good. We, we're breaking out of prison. Yeah. There you go. We, uh... I mean, there's some good stuff in Episode 1. We talk about shitty loot in games. Mm. And... How games still have shitty loot. <laughs> this is slightly better. <laughs> That's right. Time to yeah. Oh wow. Oh, it's not a great. Minute. Just jump. Uh, jump, bitch. They want me to just jump there. Nah. We gotta look. Gotta look for. Secrets. You had a good Hold life. On. Time to go. Whoa. What's that? Oh, it just says halt. Okay. <laughs> the water. That sign ain't the good. boss of you. That's right. I do what I want. Sign. Don't tell me. Don't tell me where the sh bears shit in the buckwheat. They seem to not want you to escape. Well, I mean, prison makes sense. No, don't tell him to go to the sewers. That's where I am. That's that's the worst advice. Run, run, run. Uh. We're done here. I mean, is there I, benefits to staying you, here? You committed <laughs> a crime, and you should go to jail. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I could, I, let's be honest. I committed many crimes whilst I was in jail. I probably should have never left. See, that's called uh, tell, sharing the story without uh, exposition. So now everyone knows what happened in episode one. Well, there you go. And now I mean, for, we already said know, that anyway. Sewer adventure, because you can't have an adventure without sewers. That's very true, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of tired of that. Yeah, over it. So there always has to be a mandatory sewer level, a mandatory water level, ice world. You know what I mean? A lot of time. Ice world, yeah. You know, it's like just be what you're about. You know? I like a little variety. Like I, I like it changing one environment to another. Like if you're in a city, you end up in the sticks for a little while. Like the, even the Ninja Turtles movie got out of the sewers. Yeah, but that's because they they are New York. They're not necessarily just sewers, but they're sewers in New York, and, and their the job is to protect level. protect the city. I mean, they're close to street level. That's that's, that's true. Well, da Vinci invented that. Da Vinci invented sewers being at street level. Uh, kind of. He was asked to develop a city plan. Oh, right. Plot twist, the rest of the good guys. I believe it. Uh, but, uh... Never, never mind, that's usually where plagues come from. <laughs> but, well, not the rats, Hidden but the fleas plums. riding the rats. Ooh. I mean, that, point. Was, that was Black Death 101. But, uh, good Da Vinci point. was asked to basically desi de like, well, they design a dream They devoured them, bones and all. Yeah. Right. The bones are where the flavor is. So, but he didn't do, like, suit. an aqueduct and stuff. He just did, like, the design of the city. So, like, where the water would come in. It where was the a go, where by layer out. loadout. Uh, basically, he wanted to have a double-layered street. On the top yeah. would be, like, horse traffic and, like, carts and stuff. And on the bottom would be, like, foot traffic. So, like, pedestrians and, like, shop fronts and things like that. So he, he created the, the original, like, dual-layered highway. Mm. I mean, I don't think he, they let him build it, because it was Da Vinci, and they're like, man, you're crazy. Oh. Whoa. What are you going to do, fight Stop. rats? Yeah, I just did. Wow. Get 5 XP. They wanted a piece of me, I gave it to them. 5 XP? That's mm -hmm. a lot of XP for rats. Mm -hmm. It's level one. I just farm rats all day, then. <laughs> that, that, that's always the threat in Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, when our cabal of players uh, get a new DM, and they're like, oh, yeah, we'll do, we'll do like, you know, earned XP. It's like, what's to stop us from just farming the shit out of it? Like, right. just make it milestone. If we're, we made it to the part of the story where we should be a certain level, just give us that level, or else we're going to kill every rat in the sewers. <laughs> like don't don't underestimate our autism like we'll do it if we think we're our retired. autism yeah like, 
Oh, Eric says village, <laughs> not rat, not sewer. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say people give more XP, That's... and there's probably more of them. Oh boy, don't get me started on evil campaigns. We need to do an evil campaign. I, every campaign I'm in is an evil campaign if I'm a player. Even, nah, even my that's paladins are aggressively gray. Yeah, but he's not evil. No. Like, he is very... Like, you kicked somebody out of the group because they were acting a little evil. <laughs> that's true. I did RP kick a character. <laughs> that was probably the best, though. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, it kind of worked out. Yeah. It's like, well... So it's not working. You, we've kind all of voted. a psycho. <laughs> kind of. <Yeah. laughs> uh, well, it, sometimes you get a character in Dungeons and Dragons, and they're just what's called a murder hobo. And murder hobos yeah. just have no background, and they just want to kill everyone because it's just a fantasy of theirs to just get killing. And they right. don't have a home. They obviously like. Clearly, their character doesn't have any kind of a background or story, so they're they're literally like the folk killer hobo of myth and legend, where it's like, oh right. yeah, you never know when a rambler's gonna come to town and just start killing people. It's like, mm. <laughs> it's like, oops, that's me, guys. Yeah, so they'll they'll just flaunt authority. They'll go around just killing all their problems in like full view of the guards, and then they'll just go and live in the goddamn sewers. Just Kill throwing, the too. throwing bodies to lure the rats away so they can navigate all their various sewer puzzles. <laughs> hey, is there some correlation here between this story and what's actually going on? What Are you inferring that I, I line up all my tales with what's going on in a game? Get that rat screw. I mean, that's probably the best way to, uh, to do... Um, Live action comedy, you know. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, observational humor. There you go. You're very, you're very good with observational humor. Whenever I see those like skewered rats, it makes me think of the uh, teriyaki beef sticks they sell at the Chinese place oh. downstairs. <laughs> and they're so good yeah. because they make this yeah. badass teriyaki sauce. So they get like these big strips of like, what do you want to call it? Like skirt steak or something like that. And yeah, they skewer like them up, steak. and they just like fucking flame roast them and they just give mm -hmm. you a sack of like beef on a stick and like yakitori style that's exactly it and i love them for it and whenever oh, ow <laughs> okay. do you think the tripwire was gonna lead to like confetti no i thought i was gonna like cut it and not get hurt but i guess okay so now okay can you crouch oh oh Ooh. oh Oh, okay. Little little tummy shot. For rent, huh? But yeah, so like that. Whenever I see like in Fallout, like iguana bits, or uh, like rad roach on a stick, I all I can think of is that yakitori beef, and I love <laughs> it. it. Makes me hungry. I love it. Yeah, dude, I love it. And uh, or the sesame chicken and stuff too, or chicken satay with a nice peanut sauce. Oh. oh yeah. Mmm, sewer cuisine. Mmm. <laughs> but yeah, Peanut like Peanut and rat sticks. Like meat on stick or anything in dumpling form is like the pinnacle of food food. Food food for eats. Yeah. I wanna go to Japan so bad. Ooh. My one friend did that. Yeah. And they just get like yakitori live from some guy off on the street and just probably cooking rat or something. Nah. I lied. He's not my friend. <laughs> Fair enough. We hung out for like two months and he asked me to help him move. That's how you burn that card fast. Oh, yeah. I don't even ask friends to move most of the time. I just go through and throw away everything that I don't really want and I end up with like three or four boxes and some furniture. I'm like, all right, I can do this. I can live with this. It's all my boxes of meat and sticks. Yeah, it's just boxes of meat and sticks and peanut sauce. We're good to go. Oh, someone's leaving Corpo's sewer letters. Mm. Have a cross Ooh, what's this now? Oh, okay. New murder weapon. It's like a gun for kids. And I even got a new spa. Wah, wah, cha, cha, cha. Ah, the old S word. Indeed. S word indeed. 
Oh man. Now I have to go through my, my memory <laughs> my memory banks <laughs> and figure out which like bits of sewer lore I haven't shared yet. Uh, like have I talked about the rat societies of New York? No. Oh, Good. I don't think you have. So, this is this was a great rabbit hole to go down. But Okay. <laughs> Uh, there, there's basically like two social classes of rat in New York City, and uh, right. what it ends up being is there's a like I, I was reading like this biologist who was studying all the sewer rats in New York, and the two uh, societies of rats are the, the they call them like the dominant and subordinate group, and the dominant rats are the bigger ones. They're they're like a lot bigger. They have access to all the good food, and what they do is they uh, they get to like sleep during the day down underground and when they wake up they go up to the surface at night to get all the good pickings like out of the trash right. and stuff so uh what ends up happening is because you know there's only so much real estate in new york and there's so much like you know trash to go around at night the rats that are too small and weak to uh like fight these big rats for the garbage and like the the sweet nighttime pickings uh, they have to go underground during the nighttime and sleep. And right. they have to come out during the day. So it's a lot riskier and they're a lot sneakier as a result. Because uh, they get displaced by these big rats. And it's just wild that, like, these rats are now diverging between day and night rats. Ooh. wonder if they're going to be, like, uh, like, start evolving and have no... Um no fur, you know, and have like crazy <laughs> eyes that don't have to deal with the sunlight and shit. Oh, gross. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty gross. <laughs> nice Although, segue for that is the uh, the L.A. Uh, lizard people. Did you ever hear about that one? L.A. lizard people? Are these like yeah. herpetologists? They're like um, a legend in L.A. that it's like such an old city that's been built upon and built upon and built upon that uh there are actual sewers that link up with like abandoned cities and stuff under the streets of LA and if you like wander into them you could find these these lizard people that are living in the the sewer cities and stuff i mean that's close enough to the truth of like people living in the sewers and old railways uh, there was a documentary called, I think, Dark City? Uh. Right. If I this thing right. said, look for the whiskey for the combination. What the, f what whiskey is it talking about? No, Dark City was a different one. That was a musical documentary. Uh. <laughs> was it Dark Days? No. Jelly, in case you're too deaf, remember, look to your whiskey for the answer. Whiskey, got it. Yes. So the documentary was made in 2000. It was called Dark Days. And it was right. uh, following the lives of like a few homeless people who lived in the, un, uh, the disused underground tunnels in Midtown, like up in Manhattan. So like th this guy was like getting to know the people living down there and like, you know... Uh, kind of hiding how he got there so they wouldn't get like flushed out by like the you know the port authority or whatever right but like there's you know miles and miles of tunnels that aren't getting used around manhattan so like in the old abandoned rail tunnels there's like people living under there you know just homeless folks that like you know you want to avoid like the shitty cold of the winter or getting busted up by the cops so they build like right. they build in the tunnels they have like you know tents and they you know, you, you kind of got to watch your own back or make friends with your neighbors so they'll watch your back when you sleep. And, right. like, it, it gets into it. Like, you know, if you're, like, some douchebag teenager going down to, you know, just goof around and drink and, like, hassle the people living there, like, they're going to fucking scare you off. Like, right. Like, get the fuck out of here, kids. Like, you, you douchebags. Yeah, so it's, like, it's not all fun and games for them. They're there to, yeah. like, live and survive and shit. Like, these are people that are, like, deep in debt, or they're victims of abuse or violence, or they're dealing with, like, you know, chemical dependence or mental illness, and they're, they're just trying to, like, get by. So it it, it goes into, like, you know, the, the specifics of a few of the people that were willing to, like, talk about it. But, like, it was a really interesting documentary. And then I saw another one with uh, people living in the tunnels in Vegas, I think. Like, same deal. Like, people just trying to get by. 
but uh, mm. yeah, if you go wandering in the sewers long enough, for whatever reason, you're you're gonna meet people, and they may or may <laughs> not want to see you. Right. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Okay. Did you find a combination yet? No. I'm, it says look to your whiskey. But I haven't seen any, like, whiskey bottles that have numbers on them or anything. So I'm looking for, like, a case of whiskey or something, or... Like, there's nothing in here. I went all through here and over here. So the Lord Regent is a shriveled prick and a liar. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't... I don't see... Any combinations? It's probably in a note or a letter. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, look, Corvo taking this. It's probably not from him. Or I don't think your this, friend. This you is the safe. thing. Jelly, in case you're too daft to remember, look to your whiskey for the answer. Whiskey, got it. Where did you find that letter? Right next to where I got the stash. Was there whiskey near? Like, it was like right here. Can you... It was either there or it was over here. Actually, I think it was over here. It's sitting on this. Maybe so I'm that... Looking... I'm, I'm guessing that guy that's drunk dead is going to have it near him. Drunk back... dead? This the, the dead bodies. Like... Is there whiskey there? Or in the tunnel, maybe? No. Just empty bottles. Okay. But I can't, like, see it. Maybe I have to break an empty bottle that's inside? No. Hmm. I mean, what all could be in there anyway? Like some some money, Funny, some nice. boules. Yeah, but we just vacuum up money like crazy. Uh, so where's the safe? Over here. Is there like behind the shelf, maybe? I mean, you I, I haven't it was fully explored table, up right? here. It was on that table right there. Look behind the whiskey. There isn't... There isn't any whiskey, though. Oh, wait. Oh, no, it's just another bottle. Pass the empty bottles on the shelf behind the seat. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, okay, I just saw numbers. Huh? No. Yeah, this is over yeah. here. The note was right here. The shelf behind the safe. Look behind it. That's not a shelf. No, it's this just a box. a little table. Nothing? No. Uh, okay. Well. Yeah. It's 451. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There you go. Nice. Ta -da. Yeah, we did yeah, it. Yeah. Fuck you, you got puzzle. Got money and health jar. There you go. Yeah, we got Google. <laughs> you dumb puzzle. I don't need to be smart if I got Google. Yeah, I don't see that shit anywhere. Well, there we go. Thanks, dead body. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Ooh. That's yes. some more. Yakitori. <laughs> Yakitori. Yeah, it's all about the quality of the wood you're getting the smoke from. You gotta do, like, charred white oak. 
Ooh. and then uh, as the fat drips out of the meat, it hits that wood and sizzles and aerosolizes and brings the flavor of the wood into the meat. Mm. That's yeah. good. Right? Hey, what's up, sewer man? Oh god. Ooh. The rat's ours. You can't have it. <laughs> I was cooking that. Oh, he marinated <laughs> it for so a half fun. hour. Oh. Ooh. Oh, he's dead now. Lethal counter. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> he got cut his head clean off. Yum. Just in case you need a second head. Ooh, thanks. Ah, I told you. They were cooking. <laughs> cooking what else are you going to do in the Yummy, sewer? yummy Cook yakitori. Rat. Cook rat and shoot hobos. Good episode title. Oh, it is. <laughs> All right. We're almost out of here. Yeah. Man. Video games give a gross misrepresentation of how much we end up in sewers. And how many dead bodies you're going to loot in a lifetime. Like, totally unrealistic. <laughs> yeah, like, look at this. Ooh. These people lose a lot of face blood. Face blood? Oh, yeah. That's your most bloodiest part? Not really. Yeah, that's why, um... Did you ever watch wrestling? They used to uh, palm razors to the wrestlers, and they would, like, slice up their face real quick. And it would have... It would look like this insane amount of blood that was coming out of their face just because of all the capillaries that are under the skin. Well, yeah, in the sense of capillaries, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. let's get well, out of here. No, I love the sewers. I have become institutionalized to them. Well, we're going to do that <gasps> in the next episode. I'm afraid. <laughs> ah. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.